All market ETFs are designed to give you broadly diversified exposure at affordable price. They're great core building blocks for any portfolio, but with so many choices, where do you start? Today's ETF Battles is a triple header, audience requested matchup between all market equity ETFs from Vanguard, State Street Global, and American Century. Stick around. You're watching ETF Battles. I'm Ron DeLegge. If it's your first time here, welcome to the show. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button. And if you're an old timer, welcome back. And for both groups, keep your ETF battle requests coming. Hit us up with your ETF ticker symbols in our comment section below or on our Twitter feed at ETF Guide. And uh, we'll take a look at that. Now, be sure to check the description section below. We've got links to our program judges plus our program sponsor, Direction Investments. Today's ETF contest was suggested by a viewer named Div It Up. Isn't that a famous reggae song? Little darling, div it up. Come on in, div it up. Anyway, Div It Up wanted to see today's triple header between American Century, Vanguard, and State Street Global. We've got ticker symbols AVUS going against SPTM versus VTI. That's a lot of letters. But judging today's broad market rumble, here to break it down for us, we've got the analytical prowess of Dave Natig with Vetify and Mike Akins at ETF Action. Judges, apologies for my reggae references. I, 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 you know, Bob Marley fans are not going to like me for that, but I had to do it. Thank you for joining us. Loved it. Good to be here, Ron. <laughs> yeah, you can join my karaoke crew anytime, Ron. Oh, thank you very much. I appreciate it. Sign me up. So we got our four battle categories, cost, exposure, strategy, performance, and then mystery. We're going to blaze through each of these categories one at a time, and then the composite results will be reported later on in the show via our final scorecard. Our judges can opt for split decisions. They can nominate wildcard ETFs if they feel there's better choices elsewhere. Keep in mind none of the battles that we do on this program are ever predetermined or known in advance by our judges or myself. So let's kick things off with cost. That's our first category. Mike, you're up. Please get us started. All right. So we've got a battle of broad-based U.S. equity here. So um, cost should be very low, and it is very low. Um, you know, when you look at uh, SPTM and VTI, I'll get into this later, but they're both passive. They're both tracking market cap indexes. Um, they're going to have high overlap. They're both three basis points. VTI is going to be a little bit cheaper on that front because it is the granddaddy of this category, and liquidity is, is massive. But SPTM is... Plenty big at five and a half billion and at three basis points, pick your favorite wholesaler and figure it out. I'm going to throw a little caveat in there, though, because AVUS is 15 basis points, so five times more expensive. And that's my winner today, because where in the world can you get active management for 15 basis points? I think that's a, a testament. We'll talk about a little more in exposure strategy, but I think 15 basis points for this strategy that is actively managed and has proof that it's actively managed um, dictates a winner when you think of all the the factors that should go into cost of tracking air, um, active share, things of that nature. So I'm going to go with the most expensive at 15 basis points as my winner for the cost category. That's a curveball and a strong start. Thank you very much, uh, Mike. Dave, you're up next for cost. How do you see it between these three ETFs? Yeah, so the numbers are the numbers. Uh, I'm going to come to the opposite conclusion. It's hard to hard to argue against VTI. Three basis points, trades like water, uh, you know, does what it says on the tin all day long. It's, you know, it's an absolute stalwart of an ETF and you can't really get this kind of exposure any cheaper anywhere else in the world in any kind of structure. Um, so I'm going to pick VTI. The points about uh, getting active for 15 basis points, totally legit. Uh, but on a pure cost basis, I got to give it to VTI. Next up is exposure strategy. So Dave, you're still up. Give us your analysis. Yeah, so these strategies are actually surprisingly different. I think a lot of people think, oh, you know, all cap U.S. equity, it's all going to be the same. Not really the case. Um, we have two passive entries here. We have SPTM tracking an S&P-based benchmark, obviously, uh, and the Vanguard Fund tracking a CRISP-based benchmark. I'm a fan of the CRISP methodology. I like how they actually bucket and manage the edges of the portfolio. I like the screens that they put on it. So between those two passive strategies, I actually 
kind of like Vanguard's approach a little bit better. However, AVUS actively managed and genuinely actively managed, as Mike was saying, it's, you know, pick one stat, it's 50 uh, billion average uh, median market cap versus say 132 billion median market cap for SPTM. It's clearly making some actual calls. Its portfolio is, you know, a more value tilted. It's a little bit more small cap tilted. That's really paid off for it. From a strategy perspective, this is a case where I think Active really works in this wrapper. Okay, so I got you down for AVUS. Thank you, Dave. Mike, you're up next. Break it down for us. How do you see it when it comes to exposure strategy? So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have two winners in this category. I'm going to have a passive winner and an active winner because, look, at the end of the day, I'm a passive guy when it comes to broad asset classes. And I just think you're, this is the, the old 80-20 rule. You spend 80% of your time on 20% of your portfolio, which is the more complicated stuff. This definitely fits into the 20% of your time, 80% of your portfolio bucket. So with that caveat, I'm going to um, just go into two things. One, I actually agree with Dave. I like uh, the VTI construct better from an indexing perspective. It's a little bit more of a total market, which is why I like it. Um, if you just look at the breakdown of large, mid, and small, um, VTI has got a little bit more small, a little bit more mid, captures that total market a little bit better to me because um, I always think total markets are underweight, mid, and small caps as it is. So I'm giving it the VTI in the passive category. That brings us to AVUS, which is active. And anytime I look at active, there's a few things that I do immediately to say, is it truly active? I look at overlap. Um, overlap is high. I mean, as you'd expect, that's a 15 basis point. It's designed to be a core of your portfolio, but high is in like 60 to 65% relative to VTI and SPTM, meaning that they are making tilts. So that's check one. They're, they're, you're getting something for buying active. Um, it's different. And then the second thing I look at is, does it change over time? And when I look at AVUS, you know, a great thing to look at right now is you can see back in July of, you know, 2020, they had about two and a half, three percent energy. Today, they have eight and a half, nine percent. They have actively started tilting the portfolio and you can see that over time. So there is active decision making processes going on. Um, and we'll get to this in performance. But so far for the life of this product, they've done a pretty good job making those kind of macro allocations from sectors and industries um, as they um, rotate their portfolio. Uh, Dave already hit it. It's got definitely a value tilt, which nine times out of 10, if you look at an active manager in this space, they're going to have a value tilt. Part of that simply that they're not going to own all of the mega cap names. Um, and that also could be part of the reason performance is better. But I like AVUS as the overall category winner because I think you got to hand it to them. They're offering a low cost, broad market, um, active construct that's truly delivering difference. Now, whether that difference adds value over time, that's a different debate. And whether that value is worth your time and effort, that's another debate. But for today's battle, um, I'm going to give the winner in this category to AVUS. Next up is the performance category. So let's see how these three ETFs compare. Mike, you're still up. Break it down. Yes. I mean, if you look at performance over the you know one and three year, which is what you can track for the since inception performance, AVUS has outperformed. Um, now, there, you're going to have to put a big caveat on that um, in that values outperformed in that time period. Um, so, you know, if you'd had it allocated to a value strategy, you'd actually be outperforming all three. So just something to keep in mind. But considering this is a core category and it definitely checks the boxes of core, they have outperformed. Considering all the things I talked about in exposure strategy, which is are they, you know, making changes as the markets change? Yes, they are. I'm going to give it to AVUS again as a performance winner, because not only actuals there, but with the limited track record they do have of a little over three years, they've proven that they're capable of, of adding alpha with their really small expense ratio in this space. Dave, you're up next. How do you see it in terms of performance between these three funds? Yeah, I mean, the numbers are the numbers. I, the, I ran these from inception, and I thought it was really interesting that AVUS has beaten VTI by about 9%, but has only beaten SPTM by about 2%. And if you further tear apart SPTM and VTI sort of over their lifetimes, they have periods where they actually perform quite differently. I was actually surprised by that. I kind of expected all of these funds to just be white on rice, just to be very, very, very similar. 
that turns out not to be the case. I think we've got a great object lesson here and how things that look very similar can in fact be quite different. I absolutely give performance here to AVUS. It's absolutely done what it says on the tin, but I'd also just use this as an opportunity to, even when you're looking at those, uh, the individual funds in the passive space, don't assume they're all going to be the same. Our judges are making some awesome points on today's program. I'm enjoying it. I hope you're enjoying it too. Next up is our mystery battle category. This is where our judges can pick a single factor or multiple factors to make their persuasive arguments. So, Dave, what is your mystery battle category and which of these ETFs stands out? So I'm going to take a little bit of a page from Mike's book here, and I want to talk about what you're thinking about doing with this allocation, you know, the 80-20 rule here. Um, and I'm going to give this to VTI as a portfolio tool, right? In terms of actually constructing a real world portfolio, I agree with Mike. I think plain vanilla is really the hallmark of the core of any great portfolio. As much as AVUS has done what it says it's going to do and might be an interesting allocation as part of some tactical strategy, if you're building a portfolio for the long term, it's really hard to beat the three basis point, crisp based, slightly smaller cap, slightly more value tilted VTI. I give it to that as an actual portfolio tool, VTI. Mike, you're up next. Your mystery battle category, what is it? And which of these ETFs wins it? Yeah, so is it worth it is really what it comes down to in, in this. And I, I'm pretty much going to parallel what Dave just said. But here's the thing. AVUS, I applaud them. They've done a great job. And I think that there are certain people that are going to appreciate that active management and that this is a good strategy to think about allocating to. In my mind, you know, with the great calls that they've made over the last three years, they've offered a little over a percent alpha to SPTM, a couple percent versus VTI. Um, is it worth my time and effort to do all the analysis on the large cap core equity space to determine this manager can deliver a little bit? Or am I better off spending that time talking about man the doing research on managed futures or making a tactical decision between technology and energy or you know, allocating to developed versus emerging. There's a lot of areas where you can add a, a little bit, goes a whole lot further. And to that extent, um, my winner in this category is also VTI. It's granddaddy. It's low cost. You know Vanguard's going to be there for the long haul. Um, look, SPTM is really good as well. But in this category, I'm giving it a VTI. Um, and it's a big win in the sense that when I sit down and I'm going to read my paper at night and I'm going to make changes in my portfolio, it's not happening right here. It's going to happen with, you know, like, hey, I want to add some energy because it's only 3% of my core equity and I'm going to go buy some XLE. So that's my big reason for adding VTI as the winner here. And just ask yourself, is the time and effort worth it for the marginal difference you're going to get? Well, that brings us to the part of the program where our judges can give us their overall battle winner. And up until now... My battle scorecard, I don't know how this is going to go down. So let's give our judges a final chance to weigh in. Mike, give it to us. So here's the thing. I gave AVUS the winner on cost, exposure strategy, and performance. But my winner is VTI because it really, at the end of the day, the mystery category is, is it worth it? And great. I, I applaud their effort. I think it's right for some people. For me, it's not. Um, for me, this is an area of the market I just want to own. I want to rebalance occasionally, and I want to spend my time and effort making my decisions in my portfolios. It's why ETFs are so great. They're asset allocation tools, and you can decide where to allocate your time, add your alpha, add your personalization for your clients or for yourself. And I think just to that extent, this is a set it and forget it category. And when it's set it and forget it, and you're going up against Vanguard, it's going to be hard to beat it. Dave, your final chance to weigh in with your overall battle winner. Yeah, tough not to go with VTI here too. I just point out, this is a portfolio you're going to own for the rest of your life. It's 4,000 holdings. It effectively is the entirety of the U.S. stock market. There may be some nuances around the corners, but the core of any great portfolio is going to be a fund like VTI. Hard not to go there. Again, AVUS, really interesting. Definitely has had its moment in the sun. To Mike's point, you might just do better taking a little bit less VTI and maybe putting some value fund in your, in your satellite part of your portfolio, get that same result. But then again, you don't have to touch VTI. It'll sit there forever. It's also one of these funds that's, you know, a, a multi-share class fund from Vanguard, which means they've had a decade now to deal with any tax overhanging in this portfolio. This is not a fund where you're going to get a surprise capital gains distribution in any year. Mm -hmm. 
Well, our judges have brought brought it and weighed in with their great analysis. And according to my battle scorecard, today's winner is VTI from Vanguard. And that this was really a surprise because I didn't think it was going to shake down like this. With we had AVUS uh, gaining uh, the judges' favor in many categories, like exposure strategy, performance. But with some caveats, AVUS does have a limited performance history compared to the other two ETFs in this battle. Um, one of the, the interesting points made uh, by Dave was that, listen, just because this is a, a, a broad equity ETF uh, category, don't assume that all these funds are necessarily doing the same thing. Uh, we make that mistake often. We, we just look at it and we assume, oh, there it's just all of them are pretty much tracking uh, the market in a similar sense or a similar way, but that's not necessarily the case. You do have to look underneath the hood. So that was a great point. And then uh, another point from uh, Mike mentioning that uh, AVUS is definitely not a closet index fund. And for an active strategy, it packs a lot of value, just charging 15 basis points for that strategy. And really that's what you want. If you're buying any active strategy, you want it to not be a closet index fund, you definitely want it to be acting differently and have a high or relatively high active share. And so great points, great observations. And thank you so much, judges, for breaking down today's all market ETF matchup. We couldn't have done it without you. Well, thanks for having us. Thanks. Really appreciate it. Well, great job again to our judges for their keen observations. Well done. Be sure to visit the description section below. We got research links to both of our judges. And while you're there, check out the link to our program sponsor, Direction Investments. So which ETF battles would you like to see in our next episode? Post your ETF ticker symbols in the YouTube comment section below or hit us up on Twitter at ETF Guide is our handle. And if we choose your battle, you win your choice of an ETF battle shirt or a coffee mug. I'm Ron DeLegge. Thank you so much for watching. Look forward to seeing you next time.